there's a lot of misconceptions about what that actually means. So today we're going to talk all about do spiraling the right way. Thanks so much for joining me. My name is Penny and I am a teacher here in Ontario, Canada, and I have a new episode that comes out in the Teaching with Manly Learning show every single week that is broadcast both on YouTube and on our podcast. It is designed to help teachers figure out how to fit everything together so we can make teaching more simple and fun and easy for both you and your students. Thanks so much for joining us. So let's dig right in. What exactly is spiraling? Spiraling in your math classroom is all about learning being spread out over time. So instead of following traditionally laid out textbooks where we cover all of the concepts of one strand all at once, and then we drop it like it's hot and move on to the next unit as we just simply work through our textbook units as they're structured. That's a traditional approach that is definitely not spiraling. Spiraling means we are revisiting those concepts over and over time and looking at the interconnectedness between different mathematical concepts between and within the strands within our curriculum. It means that we are teaching math in the context of real world examples or application of how math is used. When we think about how math is used every single day in our own lives, we don't just work on math in isolation. We don't just solve problems using one type of strand or strategy, but in fact, we integrate and collaborate all of the different ideas that we have together about using math and use what works to solve the math problems that we encounter every day in our day-to-day -day lives. So what is expected of teachers when it comes to spiraling our instruction? So when developing their mathematical program and units of study from this document, which is a document about teaching math in Ontario, teachers are expected to weave together related expectations from different strands as well as the relevant mathematical process expectations in order to create an overall program that integrates in balancing concepts, development, skill acquisition, and the use of process and application directly from our provincial curriculum documents. When we spiral, we end up weaving together related concepts and making deeper connections between strands of math that we are expected to teach. When we spiral, it also means that retention is increased. However, there's a lot of misconceptions about what spiraling is and what it is not. Spiraling is not simply using a different strand every single day on a worksheet, where Monday is number sense, Tuesday is geometry, Thursday is measurement, Friday is fractions. That's not true spiraling, because we're just asking students to go through a cyclical approach to teaching mathematics, where we're just cycling through different strands every single day without any connectedness to the context in which that math is happening. When we're teaching this sort of rotational practice of mathematics, it's not reinforcing different concepts for our students, but in fact, it's just showing them different practicing and we're not relating it back to any concepts that we've been teaching it. So in fact, there will be concepts that your students will be asked to perform that we've not yet had any experience or lessons to present those to students. It's also not simply just a quick rotation between strands without a connection or theme that we is tying all of those expectations together. So just because you do two weeks of number sense and two weeks of measurement and two weeks of data management and two weeks of geometry also doesn't necessarily mean that you're spiraling unless there's some sort of overall overarching theme or question that you're answering or somehow to tie all of those strands together because we are not teaching concepts without context. Now it's true that sometimes spiraling is a new way of teaching for many teachers. So we do need to watch out for some of these challenges. In theory, it looks great, but we do really have to dig into what it actually looks like in the classroom. And often we need to remember that as teachers, we are given very few or little to no resource to implement some of these ideas. So we really have to dig into what spiraling means and how we plan that in our classroom. We also have to recognize that planning from scratch is time consuming, especially when we're not provided the resources and materials that make teaching easier and more successful for all of us. And we also have to watch out for the many resources that are out on TPT that 
masquerade themselves as a spiraled resource when instead they're often just a rotational review of different mathematical concepts and not really and truly a spiraled approach to teaching in a mathematics classroom. So what are some things that we can do to help us plan and implement a spiraled approach inside our classroom? Well, there's things first we can start with the big ideas, and we can focus on these big ideas related around overarching questions or to themes and problems. We can think of a culminating project that would allow students to implement multiple strands in order to complete that project, and the project would be based in a realistic live situation that students may encounter in the real world. We can also think of some of the big ideas or questions that students may need to answer, or we can think of how strands help support one another. Now, some of the themes and ideas that can be related to spiraling, so if you're thinking of these big project ideas, you can think of a project idea throughout that would allow multiple strands to fit within it. So, for example, some of the theme ideas that I use in my own spiraled approach to teaching mathematics is looking at concepts like math and me. This is where students use to learn math how to describe themselves. They will demonstrate how their knowledge of value and quantity of numbers and how to display that in charts and graphs. You can also have students look at a dinner party. Students can plan a dinner party for friends and they can be given a budget that will need to purchase food and decorations that hits on our financial literacy as well as our number sense and decimals. We can also have them plan an itinerary and participate in activities throughout the night. We can provide a survey that allows students to survey guests on what type of activities they would be most interested in and incorporate some addition and subtraction, unit rates, money, financial literacy, as well as some probability. Other examples include things like running the zoo, where students can plan and run a zoo for animals and explore how multiplication, division, as well as patterns, inequalities, expressions, and even area and perimeter fit into those expectations. A lot of these expectations of big ideas fit multiple strands inside that project, which allows us to build that learning ahead of time where we can fit these multiple strands together in a way that makes sense so that students can apply those strands to solving these realistic problems that they may encounter in the real world. Now, when we look at some of the long range plans that are provided by ministries of education or school boards, as well as personal ones that you may find or borrow from other teachers, there's a lot of different ways and a lot of different plans and how you would spiral that approach. Now, I really like to look at the ministry expectations that are provided for the province of Ontario because these actually provide a multitude of ways for you to plan out what the long-range plans could look like. School boards also provide a systematic way for you to plan out what they could look like as well. However, the ministry expectations and the way they are presented do cover multiple strands in each and every unit and they're easy to follow. However, their layout also begs to question whether or not the people that developed these have regularly taught in a classroom these days. For instance, there are some huge pacing concerns as well as timing of different strategies and strands that they've implemented into their calendar. One of the evidence of this is what they have planned for the month of December. Now, as a classroom teacher, we are all aware of how crazy December can actually be when it comes to teaching, as is June and sometimes even May. But we know that there's not a lot of time or focus from our students in that month. So we want to make sure that what we are choosing to teach during that time is still relevant and real and important, but we also really want to look at the timing and say there are some core skills, especially in number sense, that are probably not best learned when our students are the most unfocused throughout the entire year. According to some of the ministry plans, they have students learning about multiplication, division, and fractions all in the month of December, which in my experience as a classroom teacher is not the best time to introduce those core learning concepts during that time. So because of that, I often use the ministry expectation plans as a jumping off point to frame my own understanding of how we can create a spiraled long-range plans. So I will combine elements, simplify them, 
fix some of the pacing issues as well as adjust them to the calendar, where sometimes they have things taking very short amount of time in the pacing, where in the reality is we know in our experience, students do need a little bit more time with some skills and less with others. So to combine, simplify, fix some pacing issues and adjust calendar expectations, one of the ways that I have come up with questions to find and plan out my spiraled approach to teaching mathematics in my classroom is to look at these six topics throughout the entire year. How do things compare? How much more? groups and balance, pieces and parts, the space around us, and what's the story, which accurately reflect what's happening in the ministry, but there have been some changes made. We do have to watch out for some of the planning issues and challenges that happen, and finding the time to plan it all out or worrying if we are not doing it right. Sometimes as teachers, we want to stick with one topic too long instead of realizing that we will be having the opportunity to come back to it so they don't need to know everything about everything all at once, that there will be more time and opportunity for students to practice, refine, and revisit the concepts throughout the year. We also have a hard time sometimes as teachers with traditional teaching feeling more comfortable because what we experienced as teachers and probably for many of us, what we initially were trained to do. So making these changes in our pedagogical shifts inside our own teaching is sometimes uncomfortable because it doesn't feel familiar and it feels different. So pushing through those uncomfortable feelings to make the change that is needed for your classroom can sometimes feel uncomfortable. But spiraling your math program doesn't have to be a long or arduous or complicated journey, especially when you have programs like Ignited Math. Ignited Math is your done-for-you solution for your full year of math instruction that implements a spiraled approach to teaching mathematics all throughout the year that is focused on overarching big ideas and questions and themes that tie and relate all aspects of your mathematics program together every year, all day long. So if you're interested in learning more, please go to www.ignitedmath.ca to learn more about how you can implement a spiraled approach to mathematics in your classroom simply and easily. Thanks so much for joining. We'll see you later. Bye for now.